have the floor, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'd like to thank the Honourable Member uh, for his question. Sir, as, uh, as mentioned yesterday in, the, in response to one of the other uh, questions, uh, we all know the inflationary pressure, in fact, has been rising uh, globally, uh, in particular the second half of 2021, due to high import prices and freight costs. The entire world is actually facing uh, global supply chain disruptions. Bent up demand, in fact, has been now is outpacing supply itself with supply chains further uh, affected by the Ukraine-Russian war. Uh, crude oil prices, Mr. Speaker, sir, are currently hovering over $100 US dollars a barrel, and wheat and other commodity prices have, have been rising uh, rapidly, sir. Domestic prices, Mr. Speaker, sir, have also risen in recent months, reflecting international price developments. Annual inflation stood at 4.7% uh, in March 2022, Mr. Speaker, sir. As mentioned yesterday also, Mr. Speaker, sir, we expect uh, price rises to actually continue uh, due to global, global food and uh, fuel supply disruptions exacerbated by the war. Uh, as highlighted also, Mr. Speaker, sir, in countries like USA, inflation rate is now 7.9%, uh, India 6.07%, New Zealand 5.9%, UK 5.5%, Singapore 4.3%. Australia 3.5 percent. These uh, go back to December, January, February this year. Uh, Mauritius, uh, like a uh, country like ours, a tourism-driven country, um, the inflation rate there is of uh, as of February this year is 9 percent itself inflation rate. Uh, of course, you know other countries, uh, Samoa is 4.5 percent as of January uh, 2022. So what have we done, Mr. Speaker, sir? And this is precisely the reason why we've also carried out various revisions to the 2021-2022 uh, budget, sir. As highlighted, we reduced uh, or zero-rated VAT on 21 uh, household items. Uh, just to reiterate, uh, sugar, flour, rice, dal, tea, potatoes, onions, garlic, canned fish, cooking oil, salt, liquid milk, powdered milk, baby milk, sanitary pads, soap, um, bathing soap, soap powder, toilet paper, toothpaste, cooking gas, and kerosene. Of course, this will mean government will forego 163, uh, $163 million, sir. Uh, however, of course, we see it as a benefit for the overall population in Fiji, too. Uh, international crude oil prices have increased over US $100 a barrel, as, as stated earlier on. Mr. Speaker, sir, to mitigate against these rising fuel prices, uh, we have removed the 20 cents levy uh, per litre of fuel a duty that we had. We had introduced, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, earlier on. As a result of this, government will lose out about $56 million in direct collections. Again, this is to help uh, ordinary Fijians, businesses, carrier drivers, bus drivers, uh, bus companies, sorry, I should say, uh, many bus companies, etc. The speaker says, highlighted also the other day, the price of fertilizer is, is skyrocketing. Uh, countries like uh, Ukraine, Russia, uh, they make a lot of urea and potassium, etc., that goes into the fertilizer uh, mix. Uh, China and Russia combined together, we are told, produces about 90% of the entire world fertilizer production. Um, and of course, as a result of that, Mr. Speaker, sir, um, we've seen prices increase quite substantially. Uh, international sanctions in Belarus also propelled uh, spot prices on GMO fertilizer or murate or potase to almost double. And of course, shipping rates have been uh, exponentially grown. Just to put it into context, sir, uh, prior to COVID, a bag of fertilizer that government used to subsidize, a bag of fertilizer was $45.65. The sugarcane farmer paid $20. Government paid $25.65. Before the Ukraine war actually broke out, sir, we received the figures, and we had to input into the budget, that it will rise to $80 to $90 a bag. So essentially, the sugarcane farmer still paid $20. Government will have to, if it goes to $80, we'll be lucky if it goes to $80, not more than that will have to pay $60 a bag. That's how much it has increased, Mr. Speaker, sir. So obviously we're bearing the burden for that, and we've uh, allocated an additional $9.7 million um, through the Ministry of Sugar Industry under the Fertilizer Subsidy Program. EFL, Mr. Speaker, sir, we are continuing with our 50% uh, uh, subsidy. Uh, we had, in fact, made it 100% with some collaboration with EFL. It now goes back to 50% of the bill. As allocated in the budget, sir, we've allocated $13.2 million in the revised uh, budget. You will see that, sir. It will assist domestic customers. It will combine annual income of less than $30,000 uh, per household for the first 100 kilowatt of uh, electricity con uh, consumption. Uh, currently under this scheme, about 58,192 customers are benefiting from this scheme. 
some of course, some more can apply too. And in addition, I hope the members, uh, they seem to forget what's actually in the budget, but we had also announced last year, and which is continuing, is that micro, small, and medium enterprises, Mr. Speaker, sir, well, they are now paying domestic rates. We are actually subsidizing the difference between the domestic rate and the commercial rate, which they used to pay, uh, and, we were, and with an annual return of $1.25 million or less. And we're covering the first 1,000 units of electricity consumed. Mr. Speaker, sir, we're extending on the revised budget We've extended this program now to July 2022 uh, with an allocation of $2 million. Of course, Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, as highlighted in the budget also, we as Minister for uh, Women, Children, and Property Elevation highlighted, we're also paying a one-off $50 to all social welfare recipients. In the revised budget, you'll see that. There's an, in in uh, SEG 50, you'll see that $7 million has been allocated. We also, Mr. Speaker, sir, we've allocated $13 million as a $100 one-off payment to all those in the informal sector in Banu Levu because they had not received uh, anything during the past two years. And of course, Mr. Speaker, sir, about 34,385 uh, WEF uh, customers will continue to get that uh, water subsidy, uh, which uh, we provide for those households less than $30,000, sir. Um, the major announcement, of course, Mr. Speaker, sir, taking into account is what has happened globally and following the uh, undertaking by government in 2018 that we will revise the national minimum wage every two years. Uh, some politicians on, uh, I think the Papi uh, lot, have said that uh, we should have revised it two years ago in 2020. Uh, in 2020. But Mr. Speaker, sir, well, obviously it is quite silly to suggest we should have reviewed the wages in 2020 when over 100,000 Fijians lost their jobs. You could not do a review when 100,000 people have lost their jobs and do a minimum wage review then. Of course, the borders have opened up. Honorable Gawaka seems to be shaking his head. Obviously, he does not understand this at all, nor does he appreciate it, Mr. Speaker. If you appreciate it, you actually would be applauding this initiative, Honorable Gawaka. Unfortunately, you need to look within to find out the solutions. Mr. Speaker, sir, the, uh, the national minimum wage has been reviewed. I have to remind members of parliament again, because they tend to forget. It was the Beni Marama government that introduced the national minimum wage. The Beni Marama government. There was, there was, there was never, there was never a national minimum wage, Mr. Speaker. Never, sir. never, there was never. It was only in the ten wages sector that they had their own minimum wage. The Beni Marama government introduced it at two dollars, and I hope just to reiterate, Mr. Speaker, sir, I have to say this because they need to be schooled on these matters, that national minimum wage means that you cannot pay anybody below this particular rate, irrespective of what job they do, whether they come and cut grass at your house or dig a hole for a foundation or any job they do, you cannot pay below the national minimum wage. The other 10 wages sectors have their own minimum wage, which is a lot higher than the national minimum wage. So it was $2 in 2014, Mr. Speaker, sir, or the review was done in 2013. Then it went up to 232 an hour, then it went up to 268 an hour in 2017, sir. Now, of course, Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, through the uh, assistance of Dr. Pata, uh, we have now uh, said that the minimum wage will be increased to $4 a an hour. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, but we're doing it responsibly, not for political stuntry like they want to do. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, we've done it in four stages because we have to be considerate. We don't want people to lose their jobs. If tomorrow somebody's paying $3 or $2.68 an hour, you cannot expect them to overnight pay immediately $4. In this way, we'll be able to make sure that jobs are still retained and then people will be able to meet the uh, rising cost of uh, the uh, inflationary impact that has been brought about by the uh, pandemic and, of course, uh, the, um, uh, the, the war in Ukraine. So, of course, we, we provided the unemployment support in respect of how we help people meet their costs uh, of, of living in respect of this inflationary impact. We've disbursed already $205 million to top up members' balance through the FNPF system, Mr. Speaker, sir. And, of course, the, now the rounds of the 260, uh, sorry, the 360, $50, two rounds and the $90, uh, a whopping, Mr. Speaker, sir, payout of $225 million. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, um, again, uh, we have seen that uh, uh, we have seen a huge uh, consumption uh, increase uh, during these times when those payments were made out. And again, you will see there is a particular uh, level of confidence that are coming back to the, to the consumers. It's psychological and it's also real, Mr. Speaker, sir, on the ground. If you go out and look at the retail stores, you will see a lot of consumption taking place. And in that respect, of course, Mr. Speaker, sir, we need to ensure that we, uh, we, we continue down this path. It's already been announced 
that should there be any dramatic changes within the global economy, uh, we will, as a government, always maintain the flexible position to be able to respond to any of the inflationary matters should they get out of hand. Thank you, sir. I thank the Honourable Minister.